Welcome back for another review and comparison. This time I have here the recently released Sony MDR-M1, a close-back headphone that belongs to Sony's professional line of headphones, which includes popular headphones like the uh, MDR, uh, I think it's, it's 7506, which is a really, really uh, popular and widely used close-back in many studios, um, all over the world because it's just cheap and reliable. This one is around 100 euro. The MDR-M1, which, well, could be seen as a successor or an upgrade to uh, the uh, 7506, um, is around 250 euro. And I thought, well, it makes sense to uh, uh, compare it to uh, two other relatively new-ish uh, close-back headphones. Um, namely the Sennheiser HD 620S and the DT77 Pro X. But let's first start with the review here. Uh, welcome to the unboxing part of the video. So you just get a nice paper package here. And I try not to destroy this. Throw this to the side. Usually I just throw everything away after opening it and um, use my own boxes or whatever because I, I really I really don't like this. I also keep like breaking or tearing apart everything I'm opening. But here it is. Nicely packaged with a soft cover here. Cable. Feels good. And the headphones. Oh, they actually secured the uh, earpads with some paper here. Man, this feels really nice. But I'm just gonna keep uh, opening and showing you stuff here. Man, my unboxings are so, so boring. I'm sorry for this. <laughs> I'm just more of a quiet person when I'm opening stuff, you know? I'm just not an, just not an, an entertainer when doing these things here, so I always have to think, uh, what do I have to say here to make this interesting? But yeah, there's actually not much to show here. You actually get a lot of paperwork here. I think these are just different languages. Both of this is the same, just in different languages. Guess Sony is selling this thing like worldwide. This is it. Headphone, paper stuff, manual, two cables. It's a longer and a shorter cable, um, adapter, and yeah. Getting back to the review. The M1 is a very light build, which mostly makes use of pretty sturdy and at least to me, not cheap feeling plastic. Of course, the headband is reinforced with metal. And finally, somebody put step markers on the sliders. So you can adjust the size more correctly. And I know it's just a minor thing, but it's really convenient and it's bugging me a lot with other headphones because I actually want it to be the same uh, length on both sides. And if I have to guess every time, it's just a little impractical. I know it's maybe not the most aesthetically pleasing design to put numbers and steps on there, but it's just really convenient. The cables you get with the M1 are pretty good standard headphone cables and feel completely fine to me. Um, you get a short 1.2 meter cable, which is this one, and this is the one I use, but you also get a longer one, which is, I think, a 2.5 meters long. Design aesthetically strongly resembled some other Sony headphones with the more formal and kind of adult design that doesn't really look especially fancy but very good in its own way. You just have this blue black a uh, little bit gray color scheme that you get with a lot of Sony um, studio headphones. And I think that looks rather major and pretty professional. Regarding comfort, the light build really helps with the comfort here. You have slight padding on the headband, but it's absolutely enough and I do not get any pressure points. The ear cups are also extremely comfortable, very soft and my ears fit right in there. I do see that they could be a bit small for bigger ears, but still the softness and depth should be enough to not bother you. And I know it's not a representative test or measurement, but I do really like how you can see how the foam here stays in position for a second and then bounces back 
it's like this is what it feels on your head it's really soft and the padding on the ear cups feels way better than the one on the headband but on all it's a perfectly fine construction comfort wise and i do include that into comfort because for me it does have a positive impact you get this nice shorter cable here this 1.2 meter cable and if you are sitting at your computer like me so you do not really need more than these 1.2 meter it's just really nice not having to deal with like a two meter or three meter cable and having to do some cable management around you here, which is really annoying. And I always appreciate companies putting these shorter cables into the uh, standard packaging. The clamping force is also just enough so they do not sit too loose on your head. But if you're sensitive when it comes to uh, headphones clamping too much and maybe you get pain around your ears or something these are really really good again they only put a slight amount of pressure on your ears or the sides of your head i guess for like 95 percent of people comfort will be very very good with these sound wise the sony falls right in line with most recently released closed bags with having a pretty strong base shelf mids that are fairly flat but in contrast to, for example, the 77 Pro X or the Fio JT1 or even the FT1, it does have a pretty unintrusive travel, which makes the MDR M1 a pretty good choice for travel sensitive listeners or people who want the warmer sound. But let's start from the beginning. Bass has a pretty strong boost. There's more lower bass than mid bass, which makes this thing here pretty nice for everything bass related. There's a lot of rumble and deep bottom end with just enough punch so it doesn't just sound big or boomy or nothing else. There's a really deep punch with a noticeable impact and the low bass extension is fantastic. According to Sony it goes down to 5 Hz and I kinda believe that. Also kick drums especially I joy to listen to when mixed right. There's even like a thumb there that you can really feel. Music generally sounds very full and I especially like that the so-called mud cut after the mid bass. So around 200 or 250 hertz that a lot of headphones nowadays have to clean up the sound and make the overall sound less muddy is not overdone. It's there but there's also a very good transition between bass and lower mid range. This makes bass guitars, for example, sound pretty good in contrast to headphones who have a bigger dip there, which can make these sound hollow or just the, the overall bass sound somewhat weak and detached. I do have to note here that this is by far not for listeners or musicians who want a neutral sound. It's pretty bassy and it does bleed into the mid-range a bit. But if you like bass, it is done really well here with lots of depth. Um, Mid-range is pretty flat with a slight emphasis up until 2000 Hz or so, which makes instruments sound really realistic and not pushed back. Which is an issue with such a big bass emphasis, but they did achieve a nice balance here. And together with the bass boost, male vocals do sound really nice, but maybe a little bit thicker than they should be, but still nice within the musical context. Um, there's also no shoutiness or nasal quality to the music. It's actually really nice and neutral here. I really like how this is a bass heavy headphone with such an enjoyable emphasis on the lower bass, which makes many genres sound great if you like bass and still the mids are keeping up and it does not sound unnatural. Listening to more complex rock and metal music and generally music where there are lots of instruments playing at the same time which could be obscured by such a bass boost I do not really get this here which already makes this a great close back. But now comes the part where people will be more divided on the sound profile. The frequency region where the upper mid range transitions into the lower treble is pretty laid back. So from around 3000 Hz up until 7 or 8000, which includes a big part of the presence region for various instruments, the M1 is noticeably recessed. 
On the one hand, there's absolutely no edginess, no harshness, no sibilance. And if you ever thought, man, this guitar hurts because it screeches in my ear, this vocalist is just exhausting to listen to, or basically if any other instrument ever hurt you, these are great because the edge is taken off of so many instruments that you can more or less listen to these without any fatigue and with the emphasis in the mid-range, it does not have this sound as hiding behind bass signature. On the other hand, this is a region where a lot of attack or bite is located. It is also important for some details to show themselves and not get smoothed over. So there is a certain blunted quality to the sound and to some instruments that usually bite or shine through the music. Which is not bad if you like laid back sound and it still does a pretty good job here. Um, the treble does come back after that region and then it's basically fine. So you still have some air which does save the treble quality and presence. To be honest, I do really like how they did that here because Sony essentially made these safe to listen to without just killing the higher frequencies and they really took out the most dangerous areas in that regard, so to say. Regarding technicalities like staging, instrument separation and such stuff, well, the stage really is not that wide and a lot of it is happening more in the front and in your head. But for being such a laid back headphone, they are surprisingly capable regarding the separation of whatever is happening in your music. And so is the detail retrieval. It's really not that bad. Um, it does not get thrown at you. But again, for having such a noticeable dip in a region of the frequency response that is kind of important for that matter, it does pretty well. So let's compare it with two recently released close backs in kind of the same price range. First, the Sennheiser HD 620S. I'm um, talking about comfort here between these two. I think it's better on the Sony because while it does sit a bit looser on your head, the clamping force here feels just right. And I barely feel it on my head and ears even after hours. Also, there are no issues with the positioning of the headphone. While the HD 620S is prone to drastic sonic differences depending on your head shape. I mean, it works for me, but there are countless of different reviews and measurements which basically confirm that the HD 620S is pretty finicky with sealing well and just how the drivers push the sound onto your ears. And with the Sony, you just do not have any issues here. It's basically your everyday regular headphone. So how do these two compare in the sound department? Well, although the HD 620S is also kind of boosted in the bass, the Sony does have way more and deeper low bass. It is really noticeable just how much the Sony gives you more rumble and more texture here. Uh, more physicality in the bass, which more or less translates to a more fun experience. Although I do really like the bass response of the HD 620S quite a bit, since it's bassy but balanced. It does exhibit a certain softness when it comes to bass hits. Midrange is pretty good and pretty natural on both of these, but there is a significant difference in the upper midrange, where the HD 620S is a bit more recessed to simulate that more open stage, um, which does actually work pretty well for me. And in that root department, the M1 is noticeably more closed off sounding. It's more of an in your face sound with vocals and guitars, while the HD 620S sounds a bit more mellow and just spaced out. I do have to admit that I really like the mid-range on the 620S. There is just something special about how Sennheiser created that smooth sound that still sounds really clear. Um, you have also noticeably more bite and clarity in the lower treble, which together with the lesser bass emphasis makes the HD 620S just a better pick for a more clarity focused sound. I do have to say that with these two it highly depends on how much bass you want with your music and how relaxed you want your music to be, because on both the mid-range is pretty good. Um, the mid to upper treble is boosted a bit more on the Sony actually to get some of that clarity and airiness back and the HG620S also ha has 
some peaks here that make it sometimes sound even a bit bright, but just generally speaking, both headphones continue with their laid back approach and do not really exhibit like a fatiguing brightness or something. Just the Sony seems to be a bit more refined here because it, it really is a bit strange sometimes with the HD 620S, but this is just a, a minuscule thing for me. I do like the treble here too. But again, staging is a lot wider and more open sounding on the HD 620S. I would say technical performance is somewhat on par. The 620S just has the bonus of having more clarity here. So it's a bit easier to differentiate all of what's happening. Next one is gonna be the Biodynamic DT770 Pro X. And yeah, comfort wise, I do really like the Biodynamic pads because the, the velour is just awesome to wear on your head. I still can see most people thinking comfort on the Sony is better. Again, just because it sits so light on your head, the pressure is just so um, light and evenly distributed that you just forget that you are even wearing them. Only thing here is, of course, when it's hotter, um, then the padding on the Biodynamic does have the advantage of not making you sweat as much as the uh, fake leather here. So in contrast to both the HD 620S and the M1, the biodynamic here is more V-shaped, meaning you do have more of a recession in the mid-range and more elevated bass and treble. So even though bass is elevated on all three headphones, the 770 Pro X has some noteworthy characteristics. It has a very good extension into the lower bass too, and does very well here, but the Sony is still absolute king with a very rounded and rumbly low bass. I do really like how bass is presented on the 770 Pro X because it has lots of impact behind its bass. Um, means there is quite some punch in it, but it's also the fastest one out of the trio here, which works really well for more rock oriented music because the decay of the bass, it's pretty short, so it does not linger in your music, which works really well with music where there is a lot of attack in the instruments. It's also worth to mention that while bass on the Sony is very good, it's also the thickest and warmest sounding, which could be just too much for some listeners, which I do not really get on the uh, Pro X here. But the Pro X does have one issue, at least, it's not my kind of sound. It has a huge dip in the upper bass and lower mid range, which does help with overall clarity through avoiding muddiness, which in fact does pretty well, but it also thins out many instruments and for example male vocals, since it takes away from their foundation and also makes bass somewhat hollow, which does sound kinda unnatural. And while the mid-range here stays clean and relatively transparent, meaning there are no nasal undertones, it's not veiled or something like that, but it still does not fully get up from that dip I mentioned. And in contrast to the other two headphones, it always has a somewhat unnatural thinness and just a distant sound to it. Treble here is far more elevated than on both other headphones. So this thing can get very bright. Strangely enough, it's not as bad as it looks on graphs and I expected it to be more sibilant and just fatiguing, but in comparison to the Sony and the HD 620S, it's still pretty bright. And if you're even slightly travel sensitive, you should not choose these. I do still think the highs are of good quality. Um, it's more evenly elevated and there is not one peak that stands out. And I think that's why it's bright, but it still works. So if you like a very airy sound with lots of shimmer and presence of vocals, pianos, cymbals, and so on, this will work for you. Both other two headphones are more balanced here. But again, the treble here makes everything sound very detailed and clear, and it does not exhibit this uneven graininess 
that you sometimes have with cheaper travel heavy headphones. Staging is also pretty nice though. Again, Sony is definitely the most closed sounding here while the 620S and the Pro X are relatively open sounding and um, I would give the edge there to the 620S. But at least for my ears, the Pro X does sound relatively open, which I do contribute to this, to the very airy treble here. But also the technical capabilities of the Pro X seem to be quite good. Although this is also partly because of the treble boost and the upper bass cut and the just overall fast sounding drive which does help with having a cleaner separation and imaging of various instruments in the song and they do not get mushed together. So to draw a conclusion here, it basically boils down to this. If you want a more balanced sound that basically does most stuff well enough, you go with the HD 620S. If you want a more relaxed sound with a really thick and deep bass that still sounds natural enough with instruments and vocals you go with the M1 and if you want a strong clean and fast bass and you like having a clear sound thrown at you you go with the 77 Pro X. So that's it for this review as always I hope I could be of help here and in your decision which headphone you want to buy and which one you don't want to buy. But yeah see you next time. Goodbye.